and when I lost everything that's when I kind of went heavy into trading and because if you wake up one morning it's only you and you lost everything you've ever worked for there's there's a lot of darkness in there you know there's a lot of a lot of people will just fall and and give up and I always believe that we have to be persistent where you What's up guys, this is Mobile Tembani here from Top Trader South Africa and this is another installment of Market Masters. You guys already know today I'm bringing you guys a, another, another, another dope trader and who goes by the name of Dueno. Yes, Hi. How are you doing? Thank I you so much great. for having me on your show today. Yeah, no, thank you for inviting us into your home. Yeah, uh, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Are we in, I don't even want to say the location of where you stay. Next thing you're going to have people stalking you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but thank you so much for inviting us into your home. I'm really excited for today's conversation. We've been talking so much and I'm like, Yo, uh, your story is going to be one that uh, I think people will relate to, you know. Yeah. And then, yeah. I think that's what's important, you know, yeah. to relate with the people yeah. and give them that sense of understanding yeah, and give yeah. them that sense of, okay, if he, if he can do it, I can do it, you yeah. know, so it's a normal average human, yeah. average guy, yeah. but above average, you know, goals and yeah, ambitions yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. If you put all of those things together, you can do whatever you want. Obviously, we're here to talk about your journey as a trader, where you come from. But like, before we actually get into the trading stuff, obviously there was life before Forex. There was forex. life before you ever heard of Forex, ever heard of trading. Uh, I think I want to talk more about your childhood, growing up, like how, what kind of kid were you? Did you, what aspirations did you have in life? Did you go to varsity? Did you not go to varsity? Yeah. Those kind of things, yeah. No, I think it's, in, it's important to know, you know, and for for me, I kind of had a rocking childhood, so I think it it would relate to a lot of the people that that's watching, and it's a good thing. You know, for me, I want to be open and vulnerable. I want to be be out there with the people because that's who I am. Everyone that knows me knows that there's no funny corners. There's no, it's all straight line, you know. So I grew up. My mom and my dad got divorced when I was a very young kid. I think I was like three years old. So. From a very young age, I had that separation already, you know, where we started staying with my dad and my mom was always with her new husband, can I, can I call, you know, my stepdad. And now always a sport was my thing at, when, as, as a kid. And I loved athletics, rugby, that's what, what thrived me to, to, you know, keep going. And that was a passion I had, you know, always a passion for rugby. and. I think it was when I was six years old, one day I got a phone call and we got news that my mom passed away. And that was quite, quite intense for, for us as kids, you know. Um, I had my blood brother, that was my direct sibling with my mom and my dad. And then I had a stepbrother with my mom and my stepdad. So when we found out that she was actually then murdered by my stepdad, it, it was quite crazy, you know, it really, it hit hard and it was it was a very tough and difficult time and I was I think I was six or seven years old you know I was about to go to to grade seven I think it no it was way before grade it was grade three yeah, yeah not grade seven it was grade three or four you know then we had to re reallocate to a new school it completely shattered the dreams I had in my previous primary school and I just always in the back of my mind had that I need to keep going because I've got my younger brothers looking at me, you know, I cannot derail, I cannot go to, you know, this dark place. And I just had to stay focused. And I think as time progressed, I came to the, the solution that whenever things happen to me in life, I never ask why is this happening to me? And rather, what is it trying to teach me? Like, is this, this is pushing me to become a better person. This is pushing me to and I always did that for my siblings. I always did that for my brothers because they were looking up to me. And I was the one that kind of paved the way for them and said, listen, 
do it, we can, we can go harder, we can push, you know, we can go through all of the dark times together. And we then went to high school, boarding school actually as well, um, got a bursary there for sport. And, you know, always in the sport because it just gives you that sense of being alive, you know, it's, it's a thrill. I love adrenaline, love to be outdoors. And through school, after school, never went to university couldn't afford it financially, our family. And I actually had an opportunity to go play rugby in France. But it did cost a lot to go there at first. So we couldn't afford that as well. I then went and I started like apprenticeship and I got my qualification in a technician, diagnostic technician. So I worked on, on cars, sports cars specifically. And through that, completed everything I did you know, from level one apprentice to level four, did the whole qualification. I went even above or beyond that and did a secondary qualification in my field. And it's something I loved, you know, I started loving sports cars. Always, you know, as a boy, you, you love cars and stuff and the speed and the thrill again. And yeah, when I was done and everyone always says, you know, go to school, get good grades, get a job and you'll be, you'll be fine. And then after qualifying, and I was like, so I was first month actually getting your, your real paycheck, you know? And I was like, okay, well, this is what I've been waiting for all my life. You know, you're 19, uh, I think I was 23 years old. And the paycheck was not what I expected, you know, I was like, so I think I earned after taxes about 19,000. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So now I need to, you know, you want a car, yeah. you want to get into your own place, yeah. buy food, yeah. you can't forget the shoes that you need to buy. And, you know, and I was like, yo, this is not, uh, this is not what everyone told us it would be, you know, it was not the, the easy out as they always say, you know, the, how can I put it, to be comfortable, if that's the word, you know, the security and the safety. And I then started looking around and I got into networking a lot. And I think by that time is just when we hit COVID. Yeah, we literally, as we went into COVID, I started dabbling in network marketing and made a big, big success as we went into full lockdown, um, went into lockdown, fully employed, earning a basic random salary to leaving lockdown and designing my full-time job. Where I made multiple six figures during, during the lockdown period. And that is where I stumbled across Forex. Yeah. In, the trading, that, yeah. In what, trading, yeah. What we're here to talk about what today, we, yeah, basically. Yeah, I yeah, know that's, gee, you have a really uh, interesting background. Gee, like, yeah, like, but you were into network marketing. So like, obviously like the stuff happened between there, you, you made some money from that. Yeah, and I think then, yeah. what pushed me was that I'm always one to be active and be busy. And I always want to innovate. And while doing my studies um, through the company I was working for, I always wanted to grow myself. You know, I got into personal development, started reading books, starting understanding the business world, like how can I become my field? And I then soon realized that my field had a big ceiling to it. Like there's only one CEO, there's only one manager, and we've got all these people that are working as employees, and you can't really grow in your field. You know, even though you become the best version of yourself, you always have that gap and you always have that ceiling that you're going you're gonna to hit. And that's when I was like, okay, how can I make money online? How can I make money from home? What can I do? And the first thing that I came across was network marketing and seeing a lot of success stories in network marketing. And I wanted to experience that. I wanted to put myself out to do it, you know. And I went from knowing nothing about marketing, network marketing, to soon earning, you know, a residual paycheck every month more than my current employer was paying me. I was like, well, if I can do that, why do I need this? You know, why, why do I need to go from six to six every day to a place that I don't actually enjoy? You know, and that's, 
that's when I started opening my mind to more possibilities and opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm just trying to see like the whole like journey of like how you actually got into trading because like I'm, I'm aware that of like the people who are like massacred during uh, like COVID in the sense of like uh, financially wise because you uh, you weren't getting you weren't getting paid right <laughs> during yeah, COVID that's, yeah that's quite quite interesting topic as well yeah. you know we got a we got an email one morning okay saying that you know unfortunately due to COVID there's no work no one's in mm. there's no business movement like mm. we cannot give you a yeah. paycheck. But if you want to get paid, you can take it as a loan, yeah. and then you can pay it back interest-free at least. Yeah, at you know? least. Yeah. But that is something that I would say allowed me to go into trading. Yeah. And I then stumbled one of my very good mates um, from America. He was in South Africa at that time. That was right, I think, about 2020, the end, just before you know, all the stuff, the stuff happened and I saw him trading on his phone and I was like, very intrigued. What are you doing? What is that? And I downloaded MetaTrader, got the demo account that they give you <laughs> when you download it. And I was so lost to exactly what was happening. But I soon realized that I, without knowing anything and I placed a trade, I made a hundred dollars. Okay. And you know, converting it back, that's 2000 Rand. Yeah. I was like, if I can do this every day, for the next month that's like triple what i'm earning at work you know so for me it was like okay wow i wanted to pack up marketing i want to pack up everything i just wanted to go straight into trading and i think in my journey of learning and understanding the markets and and growing you know financially and spiritually and emotionally i loved trading it was a big passion that i had like i really wanted to improve myself each and every day learning the market, learning the charts. And then I hit a big, I wouldn't even say plateau, but I hit rock bottom, where I resigned my full-time job because I was this youngster now, you know, made all this money in network marketing. And I literally made about two million in, in the space of a very short space, you know. And I took all of that money and I invested it because everyone always says invest and you're trusting the wrong people and yeah, one morning I woke up and it was all gone. You know, company, the website was down, um, the headlines everywhere, biggest uh, crypto scam, this and that. And you know, I was like, okay, I have no job, I'm unemployed. Today I'm, I say I'm unemployable. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, un I'm not unemployed, I'm unemployable today, you know, but no, I was, I was rattled, I was scared, you know, I, was, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what was going to come from it, I had all this money, lost it all, and then I read, you know, I read a quote of someone that said, something worse than being poor is having success or, or being rich for a very short period of time, and then having nothing again, and I then realized, and I, till this day, stick to that, and that's why I even have a diamond tattoo on my, on my shoulders. Like diamonds get formed under immense pressure. And without adversity, there's no success. So again, I went back to my childhood days, you know, all the, the tough times. And I was like, what is this trying to teach me now? You know, it's something the universe wants to teach me something. Because if you wake up one morning, it's only you. And you lost everything you've ever worked for. There's, there's a lot of darkness in there, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people will just fall and, and give up. And I always believe that we have to be persistent where we're not giving up. You know, if you give up, you're letting someone else down, looking at you. You, you know, there's people that, that look up to you every single day. And there's people that want you to fail every single day as well, you know. As, as, as much people want to see you win, it's the same amount of people want to see you lose. And when I lost everything, that's when I kind of went heavy into trading. And it's actually funny in that I already understood the markets. I already traded a bit because a lot of my money was what fueled, well, fueled my trading account. 
And the only money I had left was what it was in MetaTrader 4. Yeah. I think it was about 50 or 60,000 Rand. Okay. That's the only thing I had left. And I had my uncle come to me saying, I lost all my money. Are you going to help me make it back, you know, with trading? Yeah. I had a, his friend that asked me the same question. And that's kind of when my journey really, you know, kicked off in trading. And I was like, okay, I spent 18 hours a day on my phone. I went through two iPhones through, through that time, you know, just pushing knowledge, understanding Forex, need to help my uncle, need to help his business partner and friend. And that's where everything evolved, you know, that's where I met the, the people that I met today and everything pushed me towards that. And if I had to give up, I would probably be in a normal nine to five job right now. You know, I would probably settle for living paycheck to paycheck. But I didn't want to do that because I don't want to be that person that just settles for average. Yeah. And I want people to understand that it doesn't matter how dark times get. If you want to go through it, you can. You know, you can do whatever you put your mind to. And you must just never give up and never go to the dark side of things. You know, find people that want to lift you up and stick close to them and feel of their energy. You know, be, be around successful people. And, that's you know, in business, that's, that's a very good saying. You know, if you, if you surround yourself around five millionaires, you will be number six. But if you surround yourself with five poor people, you're going to be number six. Mm. And it is just which side of the quadrant you choose to be, who do you want to surround yourself with? Because mm. you're the average of those people. That is true. That is true. Now, that is beautiful. Sure. Yeah, but you, you know, you're speaking right now and you said something about uh, learning. I want to ask about the learning curve right now because you said you were spending so much time on your phone. I don't know how many hours a day we're spending uh, yeah, was, learning a day. I was spending about 16, 17 hours a day. But what? What was that like actually? Because like obviously in my mind you probably sit in there book whatnot, but like what was that day looking like? Obviously. Yeah. So I would literally <clears throat> work from from my bedroom every okay. single day. Yeah. No, I won't. The only time I get up is to eat, and I get up to go to the bathroom, and I literally just dove into forex courses. I was still reading at that time as well. You know, keeping my mind active with success stories. I. How do people become successful? What do they do to become successful? You know, getting courses. I first went into full YouTube um, when it came to Forex. And then I soon realized that everyone kind of teaches something different. Like I couldn't find the common ground of what is it actually I need to know about trading and the Forex industry because everyone teaches something different. I then got a course. I wouldn't say whose course it was. I went through the course, it helped me a lot to understand the basics of trading, but it's still tied back into what YouTube was teaching. You now you can still find, find all of those things there, you know, and I then got a mentor, as everyone says, you need to, to get. I then found out that what this guy was teaching me was completely derailing me from my success in trading that I've already had. You know, it was completely changing strategies. It was completely, you know, forgetting about what you've learned and just follow indicator-based trading. So when the indicator says buy, you buy. When the indicator says sell, you sell. And I was like, this is not trading, you know. This is, this is not the one for me, you know. And then I met um, a guy called Chris Bridal. Yeah. And I believe he was on your show as yeah, well. Before, yeah, he yeah. actually had one of the most impactful interviews I've had. And he's actually here today. What's up, Chris? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I then met him. And that's when everything kind of came together for me. And it's like, okay, I went to my roots. I understood the base, full basics and dynamics of trading. I understood the emotional part of trading. And what Chris brought to the table was how to implement all those things together, how to set an expectation, how to find the narrative and the edge in the market to push you to be a successful and profitable trader. Like I feel everyone can be a trader, but are you a profitable, successful trader? And that is that is the importance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, you, you're speaking about emotions right now, and I, uh, 
we had a conversation earlier but going back to a conversation that we're having off camera you were speaking about the emotional connection and trading because like essentially what happens like a lot of people say hey you need to detach yourself from the trading everything and whatnot and i feel like essentially we're human beings at the end of the day it's something that you really can't really do is just detach yourself from your money because we're all attached to yeah. money but like I, so you, had, you had a really great example that you had it uh, downstairs uh, what was it I just want you to repeat it for the people right now. Okay, I'll do yeah, that. Yeah. I know. You know, for me, learning trading and understanding the market, the market stays the same for everyone. Yeah. Like it doesn't change for each person. What you see is what you get. And I thoroughly believe that trading is about 20% technical. What you see on the charts, how you implement what you see on the charts. And the other 80% is the emotional part that we speak about. And what we refer to as detaching yourself emotionally from money. And I believe that's why it's so little people succeed in trading is because they struggle to do that. Like we always chasing money because we're working for it and you don't want to lose money. And they're just taking an ex a stupid example, if you lose a hundred rand out of your pocket, maybe just fell out, it still impacts you, even though it's just a hundred rand. It's because the emotional attachment that we have. Now, I think a very good example to give to the people is, if you kind of borrow money to someone, like for me, I, I use this and I've learned this from Chris as well, you know, he says like, if you borrow someone money, like just write it off. I've got so many people, again, I won't, you know, put their names out, but that still owed me money till this day. And I just kind of came to the conclusion that it was just a gift that I gave them, you know. Just take it as a gift, write it off, we'll make, we'll make money. And that's the same thing we have to do in trading. The moment you'd hit deposit, the moment the money leaves your bank, look at that as a gift to the broker. Look at it as a gift to MetaTrader. Like, do not treat it as your own money. Because a lot of people, and I was in the same position, you know, I was on, a, on the edge of being complete bankrupt, and I was trading to survive. And I think the moment you trade to survive, it just brings out a whole different aspect to trading. Because you break your own rules. You don't stick to what you've been taught. And you just in that mindset, I need to make money today. Like if I do not make money today, the end of the month is coming. And that pushes people to trade, you know, in a sense that they're now chasing the money and they're not letting the trades come to them. And the, the main thing about trading is I teach people that do not trade for the money, trade for the percentage. Like if we look at the normal ROI that banks give you in one year, it's about 8%, 12% max a year. Now, if you're making 5 to 6% a month on your capital, irrelevant of the balance, yeah. it, within two months you're out earning the banks. Yeah. You know, that, and that's where the flip side of trading comes. That's where the wealth of trading comes. And that's where our company, you know, we want to put that out there, reach trading. It means wealth wealth trading it's to make people understand that it's not about trading for tomorrow it's not about trading for the end of the month detach yourself emotionally from the finances look at the percentage over and above the dollar value and that's that's when you'll see a huge change in your trading yeah Actually, you, you talk about the making of the 5% or 5%, 6% monthly and all that. Uh, what are your thoughts on like what you currently see these Instagram traders? A lot of the people, when you open your Instagram, it's 1,000%. <laughs> <laughs> No, we like you literally open no, you open you, Instagram, you see you're it. gonna see thousand, ten thousand percent, some of them uh and you know, flip flipping accounts within a day, within two days on and whatnot. It's like now because right now you're talking about wealth right now, you are referring to wealth right now that hey look, this thing is a it's a long term play, you know. Is there any um longevity in this account flipping uh, yeah. era that we're currently in right now? Hundred percent and I think it's so it's a touch subject um, and there's a lot of 
those traders out there and that's why we want to be the opposite of what they portray you know for for someone to to post and put out their flipping accounts you know i put a hundred dollars and now it's a hundred thousand dollars you know all these things is it just becomes very unrealistic i think is the word and when it when you look at it in trading what makes you a successful trader is the consistency in trading now if you go out and you're trying to flip accounts every day where do you find the consistency in your trading where do you find the edge where do you find the strategy that plays out over time and gives you that compounding interest you know compounding interest is the eighth one of the world now you can literally from a thousand dollars over six years earn more than a hundred flip account 100% 100% you know you flip account 100% today tomorrow you lose 100% so in two days you're on you're on nothing you're on break even and I think the problem here is that we as as humans we are so embedded to instant gratification and I want every listener to if you're listening to this right now take what I'm about to say and implement it in your day-to-day -day, not just trading like take the word instant gratification and I've done this to a lot of my personal students as well and people that I've helped along the way you know write it on a piece of paper and burn it like there is no such thing as instant gratification and the moment I realized that everything changed for me you know there's a saying that in life what comes easy won't last and what lasts won't come easy and I want to leave everyone with that with that saying and that thought you know do not fall for these Instagram traders you know as as you call them where you embedding the the wrong image of trading first and foremost in the market you know um, people promising heavy returns and it not pulling through or you just always trading behind the screen. No one knows who you are. No one knows where you are, what you do, etc., etc. You know, um, and I feel if you just follow the compounding aspect to it, you know, if, uh, if you go on a compound calculator, you take a thousand dollars, you compound it over six years, the same time it takes you to pay a car, off, and you just do an average of eight percent a month no initial investments no nothing you can take that to about 10,000 or 10 million i mean you know, it's it's big numbers yeah, it's crazy it it's actually crazy numbers it is crazy numbers <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think a lot of people really don't want to wait for that to happen like, it is that instant thing that you know everyone's trying to get it right now you yeah, know i think people are just very impatient yeah. like we need to if you're in trading you still have to treat it like a career you have to treat it like a business because if you treat it like a hobby hobbies cost you money and you don't want this to cost you money because it can it can drain the bank account quite quickly you know so we need to treat it as a business if you look at lawyers if you look at doctors they've been in the profession seven eight years studying you know earning as well minimum wage minimum money but they stuck it through and traders normally, I think we lose that sense of understanding that we want to get into trading and we just want to heat it off. You know, I want to make a hundred thousand a month. I want to make a million rand a month. And it's just not that simple. You know, you need to be relevant and you need to put everything in perspective and understand that every career, every journey has its time frame and we have to stick to the time frame and that's also when I tell people you know don't chase the money chase the percentage rather because you take a lot of emotion out of trading by just doing that and detaching and using money that you can afford to lose and that's that's the thing you know you're not going to go spend x amount of money at a shop if you don't have it in your bank it's you won't even go there you won't even have that thought and that's the same thing with trading you know you can't expect to take 10,000 and turn it into 100,000 every month it just doesn't work that way trading and it puts a wrong image in trading and it gives people, people the wrong expectation yeah that's true 100 percent yeah uh okay there's something that you said earlier that actually kind of triggered the, the whole journaling thing we 
I know we once spoke about channeling, that you do a lot of channeling and all that. So yeah. can you just walk us through that process of uh, why is it important for a trader to, to journal? Yeah, I think it's almost like it's like learning, if, if I can put it that way. You know, the, the moment you, you journal what you did wrong and you don't learn from it, you're going to make the same mistakes twice. And I think it's so important for us as traders, like if you, for instance, take 10 trades and 9 out of the 10 was unprofitable, don't you want to know why? Don't you want to know what you did wrong? And on a journal, you can exactly see that, listen, on this date, this went wrong. On this date, I didn't, you know, get a tea. TP hit here and I got stop loss of the stop loss of the stop loss and back test go back and see was the news influence okay no there was no news that I used the wrong zones that I used the wrong areas of interest like what was it that that I did wrong and you kind of like machine learning yourself you know you kind of teach yourself and learn that okay when you see another trade come up you like you remember that this day this trade went against me and now I'm trying to take the trade based on the same bias that went against me, you know. So let's draw the weight on it. And a lot of the times we will see that when trades go against you, you kind of force the trades upon yourself. you like, the setup is not there, but you're like, I need to take this trade right now. Like, I need to get in the market. It's like a thrill. It's like adrenaline. Like, if you're not in a trade, you want to be in a trade. You know? And I think a lot of people can relate. And sometimes I say, you know, do not force trades. Do not over trade. Sometimes not even trading is a profitable trade because you're waiting the mark for the market to give you the trade that you want, that home run trade, you know. And just study your journaling, you know, study what you've written down. And that also gives you a perspective that am I over trading? Is there, because every day is not a trading day. And that's why I'm so against. Um, when people ask, you know, do you send signals or can you send us signals and stuff? Like, I don't believe in that stuff. I don't believe in I'll send you four to five signals a day. Because how can you predict four to five signals before the market has even moved? You know, for us, we trade what the market gives us. You know, some days we don't trade. There's been weeks we don't trade. And then one week we hitting big, big numbers and big trades because we've been patiently waiting for those trades to play out. And I think every trader needs a journal. Um, I think like every trader needs to get himself to, and I've got mine here, you know, I've got one here and I've got the big A4 journal right next to me, you know, and I write everything in daily. Even if you test new strategies or you testing price action, write it down, write what time is doing with price and why, where price and time meet and you'll see a big change and in your trading <laughs> perfect that is beautiful so what's your daily uh, trade what's your daily routine like your trading routine every day or how does it go yeah so basically i love to trade nas 100 so i only trade new york session there was a stage where i traded it in london but with all the news and everything happening I kind of pulled away from that and I found a lot of success in the New York session. And that also teaches me the patient side of trading as that's, I've always started, when I started trading, I was always intrigued with, with NAS, how does it work, how does it move, what impacts the market. And I will simply wake up in the morning, my alarm's always set for 6.30, 7 o'clock I'll get up always have to leave room for a snooze button, you know. It's always nice to, to lay in, but I'll take a shower, go downstairs, make a cup of coffee, you know, come and look at the, the fundamental, you know, news that we have for the day, what impacts there's going to be on the market. And I'll, in the morning, between, let's say, London session and lunchtime, I'll use that for my admin time. So I'll reply, students, clients, get all of those things out of the way, still look at the market, how it's moving, you know, mark out the London sessions where what happened in London and kind of get my directional bias for the day. And then with New York coming in, that's when I trade. That's when I come to the charts at three o'clock in the afternoon, 
and I'll just monitor price closely and get my buyers first and foremost for the day and get my entries, get my setups and take the trades between five, uh, 3.30 and 4 every single day. Yeah. And then after that, it's, you know, it's dinner time, it's time to see my girlfriend, you know, spend some time with the family, with friends, come back at night and straight back to the office. You know, on the charts, look at what the day did now. You know, play out the whole day after New York session, running into New York close time, and then just study and go over the charts and journal and you know, grow, grow yourself, you know, personal development. Yeah, no, perfect, that's beautiful. So basically you're a day trader. Yes. A day trader, so okay. No, Intraday day trader. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, do not do scalping. Okay. Um, I do like to trade on lower time frames as it just gives good entry points. Um, I was never a currency trader, but like I said, you know, I met Chris and through Chris I became someone that started looking at currencies and started looking at correlation from the dollar and all the and the yen pairs and stuff, you know, and that is something that I then went and implemented in my trading. You know, because a lot of people, you know, Chris one day asked me, like, what correlates or what do I use as correlation to NAS 100? And I was like, I don't use anything. It's a, it's a pair on its own, you know. And he's like, well, just go try and use a correlation to, to the US dollar, you know, trade it like any currency pair against the dollar. And I was like, yo, it's actually, it's quite scary if you go into that side of things to use the correlations. Um, just to identify and confirm entry points and to confirm what you're seeing in the market, you know. And that also g gives you that edge. The more, the more edge you have in the market, the less vulnerable you are in the market, you know. And then you can just let your edge play out. And trust, I think that's the biggest key I can... You have to trust yourself. If you don't trust yourself, if you don't trust your analysis, how do you expect other people to trust you? You know, how do you expect to be profitable? You now, I feel a lot of traders, they get there, they get to a point where they trade and they analyze and they mark everything up, but they never buy or never sell. Yeah, and everything is perfect. Yeah. Did you take the trade? No, I didn't. <laughs> Why? No, I was scared. Yeah, a, a lot of traders know where the market is going and they're never really going with the market where it's really yeah, going. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. You're never in the trade. Yeah. And if you're not in the trade, you're not going to make money. And it doesn't, it doesn't make sense going around saying that, hey, didn't I say the market is going there? And you were not there with yeah. it, you know? <laughs> with yeah. you saying that, I know someone that does that very well. <laughs> where, <coughs> no, go look at my, yeah. my story of yeah. three months ago. Okay. I, I told you Naz was going to gonna hit this level well, I told you the yeah. dollar was gonna yeah. gonna rise to this level mm. but we're in the trade now <laughs> I just predicted it <laughs> yeah but I guess you also get people like that who are like uh there's jobs for them specifically yeah. to predict stuff like that. They should go get employed. Yeah, we use that as reference. Yeah. We go and see what, you, no, what you're trying yeah, to show us. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And just, they should charge for that service right there. Yeah, yeah use it just yeah. to your advantage. No, nah, that's great. So I just want to ask a few questions. Biggest loss that you've taken in the market and then not in a monetary, uh, monetary value, but a loss where you felt like, yeah, no, like right now it's hot today. So I actually had a few of that, you know, starting out, I think just to give the, the viewers something to take from this, you know, you know, pinpointing on a losing trade and where for me now losing is not even, it's not even anything for me anymore. Like I don't even use the word lose anymore in trading. Okay. Okay. My lose is learn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's because my risk management is so, so good that I don't even feel the lose in trade. I don't celebrate a winning trade. Because if you, you know, feeling depro about a losing trade and celebrating the winners, yeah. you need to go to the casino, you know? <laughs> yeah, but trading, it's, we just, it is what it is, you know? And when I started out and purely based on losing trades, I would fund an account, trade, no stop loss, the account will blow or draw down. 
I would deposit money while in drawdown to hold it. I would deposit money while in drawdown to hold it and get out, you know, and I blew countless accounts doing this and moving stop losses and, you know, always adapting your initial analysis and the market is moving against you, you will start buying. The market's moving against you, you will start buying. And you're like, this thing has to turn around now. And you just, as the market drops, you just keep placing buy trades. And by the end of the day, you've got this whole four hour candle is full of buy positions, but it's the most bearish candle in the last three months, you know? And that was something that I did in trading that completely killed me. Now I had not my own funds, I was uh, trading with uh, my uncle's funds actually on uh, 20,000 US and you know now we're doing that you have to implement risk management you know and right before that before I got those funds is when I occurred my biggest loss in trading when I blew a whole account and I think that it was because of greed that was because of the flipping yeah yeah the, you know i want to go all in yeah it's gonna either blow or glow yeah you know? <laughs> that's what it was gonna be yeah. you know? and when i did that i was like i kind of screwed up right now you know i i lost money that i couldn't lose i had to look for alternatives to to get funds to actually continue my trading journey but i completely lost my whole account because I was again in the mindset of, okay, I have to trade to make money again, you know? And that's, that's the problem. The biggest lesson you took from that experience? Yeah, biggest lesson is don't move stop losses. <laughs> don't, don't fund accounts in drawdown. Yeah. Like cut your losing trades short and let your winning trades run. Yeah. I think that's, that's the most valuable lesson I've learned, you know, is if the market is against you, it's against you. Like you cannot change that. You cannot, you know, a lot of traders, they like tip the phones around and they hope it goes the other direction, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's They start true. speaking to the market like, he's <laughs> the person. Like no yeah. one's listening, the market's going to do what it's going to do. And you want to kind of protect yourself against that. Because at the end of the day, you're still in control of everything. You set your limits. You set the take profits. You set the stop loss. You push the buy and the sell button. There's no one else to blame. So I think my biggest lesson was understanding that cutting greed and ego out of the picture, understanding that you need to trade with the risk to reward. Now I trade nothing less than one to three risk to reward trade. And I know that if I lose six trades and only one four, I'm still profitable. I'm still in the green. You know, and that's, that's the thing that a lot of traders don't understand. A lot of traders, they hold the trades and referencing to myself as well, you know, because this, this is where I grew as a trader, where we will hold trades until it hits stop loss, but we won't hold trades until it hits take profit. But that's where the money is. And I think that's where emotion again comes into play. And that's why emotion is so important, because you can take profitable trades and make no money because we're not letting them run to take profit. Yeah. Now, the moment you see blue, you're jumping up and down and you're already searching for the, the sale on auto trader. <laughs> and they wanna, <laughs> you just wanna close the money and go. You <laughs> That's know? true. But yesterday you lost $300, today mm. you only made 100. Mm. So you're still behind mm. in trading, even though it's a profitable day. And that's why you can't celebrate these ones. You can't celebrate the losers. You learn from them, cut them short, and let the winning trades run. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. And on the opposite side of the scale, uh, your craziest trade. And a craziest trade in terms of like, you know, profitable, not your best trade, but rather your craziest trade, where you sit down and you're like, yeah, but that day, like, was one of those days, everything think, was crazy. <laughs> I think we kind of actually, myself and Chris, are yeah. looking at him, you know, we shot a day in the life the other day. Okay. And... Like I said, like I really or only do time and price trading on NAS 100 in New York time. And I had NAS 100 open on a daily time frame. And I was like, Chris, look at the setup. Like it was textbook. Like 
nothing was wrong with the setup, you know, and it was on a daily. Now you need to understand the daily time frame for NAS 100, it's, it becomes volatile, you know, the, the lot allocation and the contract sizes, it's quite scary. And I was like, I'm going to take this trade. And I think I held that trade for, like, I don't want to you know, overextend it now, but I think I held it for like four to five days on, on NAS where it was the sniper entry, as everyone liked to refer it, yeah. on, on a four hour time frame, you know. And I think that was my craziest trade ever. You know, I would, I'm an intraday trader and I like to go into market in and out, you know. But tonight when I go to bed, I don't want to be stressing about what's going on on my phone, you know. I want to enjoy my sleep. I love my sleep. Sleep is good for you, even though I do very little of it sometimes. But I think that was my craziest trade, you know, is when you see something and it aligns, doesn't matter what time frame it is, price is fractal through all the time frames from a daily all the way to the one minute. Like price stays the same, it doesn't change. And yeah, I took that trade and it was, it was crazy. It was actually on the day of the live, we showed the entry, we showed everything. So again, not, not the craziest money, but it's for us, it's not about all the money, no, it's about the percentage. Like what percentage growth are you showing? What are you compounding on your accounts? Because if you compound multiple accounts, on percentage basis, you, you're making big money. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. No, thank you so much. This has been such a fruitful conversation. But before I let you go, can you just give the viewers just a piece of advice that you, for guys who are trying to get into the industry, guys who are trying to learn Forex and all that? Yeah, 100%, yeah. guys. Look, for me, you know, speaking from experience, I always say that you have to live without regret. So you need to test every aspect of of something you know you need to go into something full on you cannot go into it half-hearted and the only thing i can advise you is find someone that you can relate to and stick with that person don't jump to 10 20 people thinking that you're going to find the holy grail somewhere else like the holy grail is within yourself the moment you find yourself you find your success in trading and you know Never give up, first and foremost. Doesn't matter how dark life gets. Doesn't matter what life throws at you. Get up and move on, you know. Get up stronger. Learn from your mistakes. And surround yourself with people that has your best interests at heart. You don't want to be around toxic people. You don't want to be around people that always break you down. You want to be around people that lift you up. And yeah, I think that's what I can, can advise you. Just trust the process. Like get into it, give it your all, give it the time it deserves. Because a lot of people fail in not only in trading, everything in life because they do not give it the time it deserves. Like you have to practice, it's a skill that you have to master. And for me, I still learn to this day. Like never stop learning. The student becomes the mentor. The mentor remains the student throughout his whole life. Like the moment you stop learning, you die. I feel, you know, that's when, when everything cuts down for you. Like you have to always be open-minded and learn and trust yourself. That's, that's important. Thank you so much. It, yeah. was a, it was really great being here with you guys. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting us again. And yeah, that's been a really great interview. Like, I am so like excited for everyone. You guys are watching it now, so I'm excited that you're watching it now. Yeah, that's why I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, hit me up um, on my DMs if yeah, you need yeah. advice. Like, I'm always open. Let's yeah. live fully with Duena. Yeah, we'll definitely leave uh, his instagram uh with link down there in the description below yes. so you guys can hit them up directly and then yeah exactly yeah, thank if, you so if they much. need advice yeah. they need guidance or, yeah you know i'm always there to to, to assist you know never never behind closed doors or anything you know if you want to meet up we make it happen you know okay that's Perfect. it thank you so much eh? yeah it's a pleasure <laughs> okay thank you see you guys Next time. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's still Nobili Tambani from Top Trader South Africa. And this was another installment of Market Masters. And yeah, guys, see you guys on the next episode. And a big thank you to Excellence for sponsoring the show. Thank you. And we're out. There we go.